there everybody, it's Mark Curley. I'm back with another how to draw video, except wait a minute, this is not a how to draw video. It's going to be a how to do hand lettering video. I've been on YouTube for more than 12 years. I've done hundreds of videos. I've never done one about hand lettering. And I thought, why the heck not? Let's go ahead and do one uh, and see how it goes. So what I'm gonna do is uh, zoom in over here and we're gonna start with uh, writing uh, just a simple letter A and B and uh, gradually work my way through the entire alphabet. Okay, so I'm gonna jump in here and just uh, start doing uh, hand lettering in a sort of a system that I've developed over the years for myself. And I have to say at the beginning, you know, that I am not a uh, font nerd or font expert of any kind. I um, really have not studied uh, any of that to, to any real degree, but um, I have uh, sort of found at least one form of hand lettering that I enjoy doing, and I thought, why not sort of pass this along, see if anyone else would benefit from uh, learning about this. This is, of course, very different from calligraphy, which involves using, you know, special pens, and um, really it involves incredible skill, uh, as I see it, uh, using these pens to make um, thick and thin lines and so forth. I'm just kind of drawing the letters, and that's why I hope I'm correct in using the term hand lettering. Now, this uh, letter A is my preferred form uh, of doing this sort of hand lettering. And as you can see, there's, there's sort of the thick areas, which tend to be the vertical uh, areas, and then the thinner areas um, that are a little more horizontal. And uh, this little ball here that forms at the end of the A, all of this stuff sort of comes from my having, you know, casual, casually observed uh, what various fonts look like, what I think they call the serif fonts, fonts that have these little decorative um, lines that come off of them. Now, what I'm going to do here is, uh, and I'm using these lines that I've put down in advance. That's one of the first things you want to do if you're serious about getting a sort of uniform uh, height to all of your lettering is to, to get um, a, a few guidelines down with a ruler, I would advise, as I did here, uh, to make sure that your each letter is precisely the same height at the very least. I don't get so much into trying to make sure that the width is uh, identical, but at the very least I want the height to be uh, similar for this type of uh, lettering that I'm doing right here. Now, you can be more playful and sort of do a deliberately um, oddball type of font where some of them are taller and shorter than the others. I thought I would, for the purposes of this video, show what I would do if I were trying to do sort of nicer, uh, uniform-looking hand lettering. But again, you see with this letter B, uh, lowercase letter B, that uh, the horizontal parts are thicker than, uh, or no, I mean the vertical parts, come on Crilly, get it right. <laughs> the vertical parts are uh, thicker, the horizontal parts thinner. And uh, this little thing that comes off here, notice this sort of diagonal slant here. You're going to see that on a lot of these um, letters that go uh, taller, like the letter uh, B uh, and D and H, uh, K, L, and so forth. Um, but what I'm going to do now is kick it into time lapse. I don't want to try to cover every single letter of the alphabet. We're going to go ahead and do C, D, E, and so forth. And maybe when I come to the letter E, uh, I'll have uh, more to talk about. So let's go ahead and get a few of these done in time lapse. All right, so before we get to the uh, letter E, I thought I'd say a quick thing about, notice that the lowercase letter D is not necessarily the full um, mirror image of the letter B. Uh, for example, this is slanting in the same direction, which would be flipped around if we were to do the mirror image. And then there's this little hook down here, uh, which will be present in some uh, fonts. Uh, but I sort of like making the B and the D slightly different. And indeed, I would encourage you to um, create your own font. I mean, this is all about um, originality in a way, and the, the whole point of hand lettering is for there to be, you know, some imperfections. Otherwise, you might as well just use a font, right? Uh, and uh, I sort of like that. But then, then there's still that sort of handcrafted look of, um, you know, if you were making like a birthday card or something, 
Um, I think people enjoy seeing handmade lettering as opposed to a font. Uh, and it's just, there's a pleasure in, in hand lettering. Especially if you do it over and over again and you begin to sort of develop your own style. Uh, I was going to say about my letter E uh, is that I don't, uh, I've seen some people will put a little ball here at the end of the E just like you see here on the C or the A. I don't like uh, that look so I, I just have it sort of trail off just as I do here for the lower part of the C and uh, that is just a personal preference. But again you're constantly trying to get the uh, vertical areas to be uh, wider and then these horizontal bits to go narrower. Uh, I'm going to move ahead to the F and I think the G is going to be a lot of fun. So let's go ahead, we'll time lapse through F and then I'll be back to do G in real time. Now for the letter G, uh, you need to have another line down here uh, to sort of remind yourself where it's going to come to a stop. And I love to do these sort of uh, fancy letter G's that uh, I don't really know the history of it, but it certainly is unique among all the letters. Um, and I have found that at least with some font styles that the, uh, the sort of round part of the G is raised up considerably from that lower line. Uh, and uh, I just, I'll go ahead and complete this almost as if it was a tiny squashed letter O, let's say. And this is the fun part, or the challenging part, maybe a little bit of both, uh, where you get this uh, line that comes off to the side. It's really not uh, coming out of the, of the direct bottom. It's a little over to the left-hand side. And then this um, begins to sort of, almost like the shape of a, an S or a snake kind of a shape. It comes across like so. And then using this bottom guideline here, you can... Um, create this nice wide curling shape. My apologies if you hear people <laughs> doing lawn work outside my... I closed the window. I tried to get it nice and quiet in here. It just shows you how professional things are here at Krilly Towers. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, this loops around and it does sort of have a hint of a, a letter S to it. Um, and those of you who are font experts, you probably know the history of how this letter G came to be this way. But I just love that look. There's something very nice and fancy. And then, of course, you got to add this little ball coming off the top here. Again, wish I knew the story behind that. Maybe someone can uh, explain for us in the comment section, but it is a beautiful uh, kind of shape. And once I discovered how to make this type of letter G, I could never go back. I became kind of addicted uh, to doing my letter G this way. Uh, so let's go ahead now and move on. I'm actually going to go right through H, I, and J. Uh, maybe have a word about that all at once uh, before we slow down again for the letter K. All right, so there you see how I do my H's, I's, and J's. And notice this sort of looks almost like a number one, you know, and that repeats on all of these letters as well as, uh, as I showed before, the B and the D, at least in this style. Notice that the dots of the I and the J don't go all the way up to that top line, uh, but sort of float in between uh, those two. And uh, the way I do the J in a more standard way is to make it roughly as long as uh, the G is uh, below that first uh, line. But sometimes if you're feeling fancy you can really make this J swoop down, you know, uh, and you could do that with the G as well and uh, enlarge it just uh, to make a fancier design. Um, but now it's time to move on to the letter K. Now with the letter K um, and also the letter L for this next row of letters, I've duplicated this sort of three line structure so as to make sure that uh, my K will be roughly the same height as my B and letter D. Um, not that they are always exactly the same height in every one of these uh, type serif fonts that you see. One interesting thing is that the letter T, you're going to see later on the lowercase uh, letter T, is much, much shorter um, than B, D, 
F, H, and uh, K. I'm starting to sound like a font nerd, <laughs> talking as if I know all this stuff. Um, but again, the, the base of so many of these taller letters is, it looks a little bit like a number one. And then I'm using this second line. This one really is crucial, I'd say, these, these two lines in terms of knowing how tall uh, proportionally to make the sort of, I'd say, standard height uh, a lowercase letter. Now notice that this one is very thin here, this top part of the K. Uh, this lower part of the K is uh, at least as thick as uh, the vertical part of the K. And I'm going to, going to really go to town here with, in terms of playing around with proportions and show you how you might, when you're hand lettering, uh, extend past this lower line and do something really kind of fancy. Uh, especially when designing a logo, uh, but sometimes just for, as I said, some sort of a thank you card. You know, I could make the K, make that K go lower. Uh, and there you go. I should have refocused a little, but I think it stayed within frame, right? I'm going to refocus right now. And I'm going to cruise through letters uh, L, M, N, O, and we are going to stop and slow down again uh, to give you some pointers about making a P and a Q. I'm going to have you mind your P's and Q's. All right, let's stop me, somebody. Let's go ahead and uh, keep going. All right, well, there you see your L, M, N, and O. And again, this shape of the number one coming up again and again. Uh, for these uh, letters that have that sort of vertical stem uh, that they are built on. And now, getting to the uh, letter P, I'm again going to do this. It looks a little bit like a number one, except this time it's going to be dropping down past that um, base line. And uh, again, I've done kind of like I did for the letter G and the letter J created this lower line to help me know when to stop, when when to stop that letter from descending uh, past the base line. And uh, you could do fancy things at the bottom of uh, this lowercase letter P if you like, especially for logo design. Um, I'm keeping it quite flat for the purpose of uh, this video. And part of the reason that you might not want to get into the habit of having these letters extend really far past that baseline is that when you have one sentence stacked on top of another, then those lower extensions begin to wreak havoc with you know the following sentence. By keeping them relatively short, then you leave space. You sort of naturally leave space for the... Uh, uh, for the following sentence that's going to be dropped in underneath it. Now, I, I guess I'll go ahead and do this also in real time, the P and the Q. All right, well, my apologies. I didn't, I forgot that I was out of frame. I do that so many times. I'm very focused on what I'm <laughs> drawing or writing, and I'm not paying attention to what is actually being picked up by the video camera. But here we are uh, drawing for the second time, for me at least, <laughs> this letter Q, which uh, my main thing was to point out that it is not exactly a mirror image, just as we saw with the, the B and the D. It's not as simple as uh, flipping it around, especially in this upper section here you see how it doesn't look exactly like that. Uh, it's not just a reversed uh, number one when you come over here to uh, do the Q. But it is, uh, at the bottom here, largely the same. Uh, extends past that baseline to a, the same degree, at least the way I do it. Now, at last, we can move on. I'm going to do um, R and S, and then I'm going to stop again to talk a little bit about how I do the letter T. All right, before I start to talk about the letter T, though, I th thought I'd say a word about the letter S. It's a challenge, I think, because uh, it has so many curves in it to um, to get it perfectly balanced, and I don't know if I've managed that. You can see me struggling a bit. But notice that this extension here is not the same as, uh, it doesn't have that sort of ball shape uh, that some of the other letters do, at least the way I do it. Um, and now it's time to move on to the letter T, which, I said, uh, as I said before, is... Um, surprisingly short compared to some of these other uh, sort of 
taller letters that uh, like the letter B uh, or D or K or L. Um, at least the way I do it, I keep the letter uh, T, the lowercase letter T, quite short. And uh, to me, there's just something sort of elegant looking about a letter T that's done this way. And it has a little hint of that number one right here, but of course, in order for it to look like a letter T, you need to have this extension uh, right here. But interestingly, it doesn't look like the classic sort of cross shape uh, that we might expect from a standard letter T. Now I'm going to go ahead and do uh, the letter U and uh, move right along all in time lapse to uh, V, W, and X and I think I can stop and uh, talk a little bit about the letter Y as we uh, bring uh, this alphabet to a close. Okay, so now we're do, ready to do the letter Y. Notice with the V, W, and X that the um, sort of left-leaning uh, section is always the thicker uh, version, and these, the right-leaning section is always uh, quite thin, uh, pretty much always, if you're trying to do uh, this type of traditional-looking font. Sometimes you can get confused and, as you're trying to make the letter and say, which way, which one is supposed to be wide and which one is supposed to be narrow? Uh, and for this letter Y, I thought, uh, since we're nearing the end of the video, I thought just for fun I'd show you what I might do uh, if I wanted to get really fancy with it and um, have it extend quite a bit um, below. And I think a lot of people will use a Y in a logo design in this way have it really um, extend quite a bit below and maybe loop around and you know just show that you're ready to have some fun you know with this letter Y. It's extending quite a bit further down than uh, all the other letters that I've done in this alphabet today. And again this one also adheres to that little rule of the, the left leaning diagonal line is the one that gets uh, quite thick in the remaining line, very thin. In this style anyway, all the way down until you get to this uh, curly Q ball at the end, it stays uh, quite thin. Well, I'm going to do the letter Z real quick in time lapse, and then I will be back uh, to uh, quickly ink all of these letters. I'll probably also do that in time lapse, although I might say a word or two in terms of uh, giving you some advice. And then we'll be back with a few final words. Okay, well, you can see I went through uh, everything all the way to the end in uh, time lapse. I thought it would be fun to color in just the letters hi in a different uh, color. But uh, one thing I wanted to say about the inking is I did try whenever possible to do each line with a single stroke of the pen and not to go uh, on top of the line a second time, which just uh, produces a slightly different quality of line. Even now, right, you know, I'm, I'm sort of holding myself back from going just directly on top of any of these lines a second time. Uh, just sort of trust that the, you got it right the first time. Every once in a while you'll find that it really has gotten maybe a little too thin. Uh, but that's maybe more just an inking preference. Uh, and that basically is it, my friends. Uh, let me go ahead and grab my books so that I can say thank you to anyone who has supported me by getting them, like Mastering Manga, my book on drawing in a manga style. We've got The Realism Challenge, my book on hyper-realistic illustrations, and The Drawing Lesson, a graphic novel that teaches you how to draw. I really cannot say thank you enough to those of you who have chosen to support me by ordering those books. It really does mean a lot. But let me go ahead and lay down my pen for now. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.